Why do the Chimani people in the Bolivian Amazon have the cleanest arteries known to science? There's a paper in The Lancet a couple of years ago about the Chimani. Uh, they are a hunter-gatherer tribe in, in the Bolivian um, part of the Amazon. And they were of real interest to epidemiologists who, who were studying their health uh, because they're exposed to infections and they, they live a, a primitive lifestyle and um, for the most part to date, and sadly this is prone to change, but have avoided the, the trappings of, of modern living, which also means that they don't have much recourse to modern drugs, so they deal with parasites and they deal with infections, and so the inflammatory markers in their blood are pretty high. And we've come to recognize that inflammation is one of the common pathways to all major chronic disease, including coronary disease. So finding high inflammatory markers, the, the researchers suspected that their coronaries might succumb to that. But they were found to have some of the cleanest coronary arteries known to science. So even in their 70s, uh, the Chimani coronaries are pristine. They have essentially no coronary disease. And the answer seems to be everything else about their lifestyle. Uh, everything else about their lifestyle is pretty blue zone. So they, they eat a diet that is plant predominant, whole foods. They don't eat processed foods because they, for the most part, don't have any. They don't eat lots of added sugar. Uh, they eat some fish and a little bit of wild meat. They hunt a little bit, but it's a very small part of their diet. So overwhelmingly, it's a variety of wild plants and some tubers that they cultivate. They're physically active, they're all very lean, they don't smoke, they presumably get enough sleep, they're not stressed out. So all, all of those same benefits that we see in the blue zones in the context of a traditional hunter-gatherer lifestyle. And it seems to be such a potent application of lifestyle as medicine that despite the fact that their bodies are exposed to infections and parasites and inflammation, it doesn't harm their coronary arteries. How did North Karelia, Finland, who had the highest rates of premature heart disease and death from it in the world in the middle of the 20th century reduced their heart disease rates by over 82% and add 10 years to average life expectancy, one of the most stunning achievements in the history of modern public health. It is indeed. That's exactly how it ought to be characterized. So it's called the North Karelia Project, and it was inspired directly by the work of Ansel Keys in the Seven Country Study. And, and this is just one of many tales that belies the revisionist history about Ansel Keys. <clears throat> Ansel Keys is not responsible for us eating Snackwell cookies. He never recommended any such thing. We, we ran amok with advice to cut saturated fat, turned it into advice to cut all fat, and turned that into advice to eat low-fat junk food. But they didn't do that in North Karelia, Finland. So an epidemiologist named Pekka Pushka became aware of the profound implications of, of the work of Keys and colleagues, showing that populations that consumed less saturated fat had markedly lower rates of heart disease. He was also, Pekka Pushka was also concerned about very high intake of salt in Finland, um, and he was concerned about tobacco. So a number of the, the scourges of modern living had ganged up on the population of Finland and, and this region of Finland and conspired against people to cause these very high rates of premature death from heart disease. And in fact, you know, men were routinely dying in their 40s, and, and their tales told about a valley of widows, because the women lived a bit longer, they ate a bit differently, they smoked less. So the North Karelia Project was expansive. Uh, it involved researchers, government, business leaders, the community at large. The, the idea was to get everybody involved and do everything possible to shift overall lifestyle to the better. And so they, they weren't focused on just one thing. The areas of focus included reducing saturated fat in the diet from meat and sausage and such, uh, and, and eating more healthy sources of fat, so plant oils essentially. To reduce intake of salt uh, by eating less highly processed and salted food, and to reduce exposure to tobacco. And they achieved all of that. And the results really were one of the most luminous validations of community-wide public health intervention in history. 82% reduction in rates of 
heart disease and death from heart disease and a 10-year addition to life expectancy. Now, it's, it's, it's only fair to acknowledge that over that same half century, there was progress made everywhere else with heart disease, and some of that was better treatment. So the full expanse of the 82% may not just be the North Karelia Project, but the North Karelia Project outpaced every place else and everything else, so it was highly effective. Sadly, these 50 years later, the confusion about diet that seems to populate modern culture where every news cycle tells us something different, where there's a, a new fad diet book coming out every week refuting everything we knew up until yesterday is causing the same confusion among the Finns that it's causing here. And so there's now a, a loss of awareness of how powerful this was. After all, this is this is 50-year-old history. People growing up in North Karelia today don't even really remember it and are starting to think, hey, maybe I should do keto, maybe I should eat more meat, and rates of heart disease are starting to tick back up there for the first time in half a century. That's sad, it, you know, it's, it's probably a case of familiarity breeding contempt. We get used to the benefits of things we once knew. We acclimate to the new status quo, and then we forget that there was something important we did that got us to the benefits we now enjoy. I feel exactly the same way about vaccination. I, I think if our children were still subject to polio every spring, the, the dreadful fear parents used to have about that, do I let my kids swim, do I not? Worrying that your child would be paralyzed for the rest of his or her life as a result. If we were still worried about smallpox, we would be only too eager to roll up our sleeves and have somebody protect us. We're used to a world where you don't have to worry about polio and you don't have to worry about smallpox. And so now we have the luxury of worrying about vaccines and thinking that they are the greater danger. They're not, and they never were. So sadly, in North Korea, some of those gains are, are at risk now of being lost. But to date, massive public health improvement with the North Korea Project. So it's a validation of everything we think we know about the bad actors, excess saturated fat, excess salt, and exposure to tobacco. It's a validation of the excellent work of Ansel Keys and colleagues the seven country study, if only the integrity of that information is preserved and it's applied sensibly. Alas, in the United States, we took the seven country study, which told us an awful lot we needed to know about eating better and eating badly, and turned it into low fat junk food. You mentioned in a previous <clears throat> talk that 23,000 people in the study had an 80% less lifetime risk of all major chronic diseases, such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancer, and dementia. What did these people do to achieve this result? So this is a, a 2009 study in the, the journal uh, at the time called the Archives of Internal Medicine. It's now JAMA Internal Medicine. Earl Ford and colleagues, part of a, a large epidemiologic study throughout Europe called EPIC. The researchers in this case were at the CDC. So this particular paper was based on survey research. So these 23,000 people were asked about four factors, and then what happened to their health was followed over a span of years. The four things they were asked about was whether or not they smoked, yes or no, whether or not they ate well, which was very simplistically defined for purposes of this study as habitual intake of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains is eating well, and lack of that is not eating well. Physical activity on a regular basis, so most days of most weeks, were they physically active, yes or no? And all of these, again, were quite simple variables. And then their weight, was their weight near the ideal or not? So healthy weight, yes or no? And over the span of the multi-year study, the, the researchers compared the two ends of the spectrum. So they compared, I don't smoke, I eat well, I'm active, my weight is fine, to I smoke, eat badly, don't exercise, my weight's not so good, and these people, over the entire span of the study had an 80% lesser incidence. So incidence is the rate at which new things occur. 80% lesser incidence of all major chronic disease than these people. Flip the switch from bad to good on any one of these factors, and the incidence of any major chronic disease goes down about 50%. So they're pretty good all on their own, but fire on all four cylinders. It appears to be a lifelong 80% reduction in the rate of all major chronic disease. Stunning thing about this to me, I, I've long thought about, and, and, and the paper was entitled, Healthy Living is the Best Revenge. I've long thought, 
what if this were a pill? What if I could say to you there's a new pill available? J just read about it. Just approved by the FDA. Uh, fortunately, it's available in bountiful supply. It's impressively inexpensive, so don't worry about that. Everybody can afford it. It is shockingly free of side effects. As best we can tell, not only does it have zero bad side effects, but it actually has good side effects. So it, it doesn't just treat the thing it treats, it treats everything else too. It's just overall good for you. It's safe enough for children and octogenarians alike, so everybody in your extended family can take this. And if you take this pill once daily for the rest of your life, it will slash your risk of heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, dementia, and every other bad thing you can think of by 80%. Who wouldn't want that medicine? And doctor's offices wouldn't be able to keep up. Whatever company was selling it would make the most money the world has ever seen. There is no such pill. In my professional opinion, there never will be any such pill, but lifestyle as medicine is exactly that pill. It's just not a pill. It's how you choose to eat, how you choose to move, how you choose to live every day. Power is in your hands. So the, the Earl Ford study is just one of many published papers reaffirming the value proposition of lifestyle as medicine.